Real quick clarification and an apology right off the top. Yesterday, when I referenced returning to Antarctica, what I meant was, of course, we are going to start uncovering more things down in Antarctica like we were doing last fall. I wasn't talking about myself physically returning to Antarctica. We are going to continue covering the issues in Venezuela and also begin covering the issues with states' rights at patreon.com, www.patreon.com. We're going to do it over there, basically out of an overabundance of caution. Now, I have my Patreon channel set to 18 and over for obvious reasons. You won't find it in a search at patreon.com for that reason. So you literally have to type in www.patreon.com forward slash Florida, just like the state, M-A-Q-U-I-S, all one word. I know a lot of phones, even mine, autocorrects Maki to Marky. That's why many people have thought that I am the Florida Marky. It's never been Marky. It's just phones do it. So I don't really try to blame people for it unless they're specifically trying to misspell it, which you can tell when they're doing that. But anyway, we would like to have you here because we're going to be covering some very, very important things. We are going to back at YouTube. There's a join button. There's not one here, of course, because this is me logged in. If you would like to uncover the 24 cognitive biases and the 24 um, basic logic fallacies that trap people outside of the truth, we are going to cover that there. That's psychological operations training. It's the fundamental basis of psychological operations training. So without any further delay, one of the basic tactics and techniques used to reveal things in Antarctica is using perspective and using time and using shadow. Now, this is Google Earth Pro. This is one of the only places you can do this. A lot of the new maps that have come out that are supposedly high res and very high detail lack all of the ability for you to do that. I'm going to show you an example of that right here. I'm going to zoom in. And I haven't even titled this just for that reason, this particular location. It's just titled Untitled Placemark. Now, you would think, oh, okay, well, what's this? This is just a random blob of snow. This isn't anything to report on. Well, I'm going to zoom out here a little bit. Up here, in the upper left-hand corner, there are two little buttons. One looks like a clock with a counterclockwise arrow. And when you click on that, all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, the picture changed. Right, because now what you're looking at is historical imagery, and you can go back in time. So let's zoom back out. And let's go back to, say, 2012. And let's zoom back in. Now you're still thinking, well, gosh, that's still just a just pile of white. Well, there's also a tactic and a technique that you can use. Next to that is a little button that looks like a setting sun that says show, show sunlight. Now, in this particular instance, it doesn't do what it normally does. When you're closer in, what it does is it shows shadow and contrast. And it can reveal things that are there and later on in this video. I'll show you very clearly how it can do that. But the most important thing you can do is change the perspective with which you're looking at something. Over here in the upper right, there are two little disks. And if you tip up like this, and we're going to go ahead and kick the sun back on. And now, instead of coming straight down at it, we're going to zoom in as if we're like in a plane. Coming in for a landing. Let me find this again real quick. There we go. And you'll start to see something that you wouldn't have seen before. Now look at it. See the channels? When you use this tactic and this technique, and you can spin this disc around, you start to see something very, very different. It's not just snow anymore. 
what you see are artificial channels and land bridges. See, one of the allegations that I've made and had made all last fall is that if there were civilization or evidence for one that may have been there in the past, they would have more than likely been a seafaring civilization. Any seafaring civilization would have required the equivalent of what we call now intercoastal waterways. And these are all over down here. Now let's zoom back out for a minute. We're going to look at this from a very specific angle as well. These are islands. We have seen the Chinese create artificial islands from reefs all over the Spratleys. Who's to say that an advanced civilization down here wouldn't have had the same ability? And when you look at the shape of these islands, how they are perfectly aligned with each other, where a ship could possibly pass through, these are clearly artificial. But of course, watch what happens if you just look at it like a normal person would zooming down. This is what they show you. See how none of it appears? They're hiding it in layers of perspective. All of the things that are in Antarctica. You have to, and they, I'm sure a lot of them, the people that are attempting to do this, don't realize that you can do this and that they have missed a great many things. Now, this is historical imagery from December 30th, 2012. You wouldn't see this unless you had changed your perspective. See the difference? There's another one. Right over here. Almost the exact same shape with the exact same orientation. It doesn't look like this is a coincidence. This is clearly evidence that in the past there was a civilization down here, seafaring, that had the technology that we see the Chinese using today to create artificial islands. I'm not sure. I wish I would have brought the picture up. There's this large artificial island chain. I believe it's off Dubai that looks like a giant palm tree. There's another one that looks like um, the entire world, they, they've done all sorts of amazing things creating these artificial islands. So this isn't beyond the realm of possibility. Over here, we see another example, once again, hidden in perspective. Now this one has six 90-degree angles on it. Here, 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 here here and here. I've never seen an island or any other natural body that had six 90 degree angles on it. Ever. Over here, a lot of naysayers might say, well, this is just a crack in a glacier. Look how equidistant this is and perfect the walls are, the shear of the walls. And when you zoom in even closer, you see something striking. You see what looks very clearly like a transit tunnel. You see how below the water line, you see how it's cut? This is clearly an entry and exit point of some kind that is in use now. I've also made the allegation they may still be down there underneath the ice sheet, having learned to exist and adapt. This uh, planet has gone through a great many upheavals and changes, and their life has adapted through all of it. There's no reason to believe this couldn't be the case. Even more recently, in the last month or two, they've reported that there is a cavern they've discovered 
underneath a glacier that is three quarters the size of the island of Manhattan and almost a mile high. You could easily build a runway, take off a plane, and fly all the way around in this cavern and land without any danger whatsoever, completely encased in ice. That's how big it is. Many people can't wrap their mind around something that large, a mile high ceiling of ice. That's three, you know, three quarters the size of the island of Manhattan. So, but some things they try to hide in resolution. Like over here. Now, I defy anyone, and this is not going to uncover in high res, to go to the Rocky Mountains or go to the Appalachians and find any mountain that has three triangular sides like this. They just don't exist. Because I've looked. They just don't exist. It, they're too imperfect. Because that's nature. That's how you can tell nature from man. And over here, as promised from before, how to reveal something in shadow. Now, I have a, a pin out here that says artificial oblong structure. Now, you can kind of see the edge of it here, but watch what happens when I turn the light down. Well, I guess I had it down. My apologies for that. The edge of whatever is under the ice here is very clear, but I guess I can show you it the other direction. If you have the light turned up, you can almost not even see it, even when you zoom in. It's just very, very faint. But of course, you click the button to turn the light down, and the lines and the edges start to become very apparent. And once again, as in all of those other videos that I did on Antarctica, I will give you the coordinates for all of these pins, and you can go do this for yourself. And you can find all sorts of things. In fact, some of the best discoveries that we have covered have been uncovered by people that have come to the videos, seen the techniques, and applied it, and said, hey, Maki, check this out. Look what I found. And we have found all sorts of things. In fact, this grouping right here, there's probably a couple of dozen. There's also a... Uh, a paradigm down here that repeats over and over again, in case anybody is wondering what uh, these lines are. There are these, what I have labeled, and it's a crude label, cables, tunnel structures, that when you zoom in very closely, and you have to zoom in real close, you can see them. Now, my line is just a reference line, but they run perfectly, either... 0 to 180 or 90 to 270. Always. And I've found dozens and dozens and dozens of these. Some of them intersect. Some of them create very strange structures under the ice. And snow. So as I zoom out here, for those of you who haven't seen my videos before regarding this, all these pins represent different things that we've found that are not natural, not normal. Huge regions of things. So, like I said, with playlists, you can go and find the playlists for Antarctica and reveal the stuff for yourself. So thank you, everyone, for the support. I very much appreciate it. Like, share, subscribe. We will see you next time.